All right. Hello, Red Earth team. This is Matt Hamm, co-founder of Uprint, a faith and personal development organization. Uh, we are working hand in hand with the team at Red Earth to bring weekly encouragement and, and perspective uh, as a way to kind of continue to focus on and build a culture of excellence among the different communities and, and as a part of kind of the, the, the global Red Earth team. Uh, as, as we all know, right now we are in the midst of interesting times. Uh, it is uh, certainly unlike anything that I know I've seen in my lifetime. I would imagine any of you, uh, unless you were maybe, uh, if you're pushing that hundred year old mark, uh, maybe back in the, the war times or, you know, uh, the, the Spanish flu outbreak, you know, in 1918. But it's such an interesting time. And I really think that uh, what the media and what everybody is portraying is an attempt for us to misplace our focus. And, and I believe this wholeheartedly because I, I just feel like I can see underneath and behind the scenes uh, of the, uh, the, the, the narrative that, that is being portrayed. Now, listen, I'm not uh, arrogant. I'm not ignorant. Uh, I might act stupid at times, but I, I know there is a virus and it is something we have to take seriously. And I do believe we need to do our part to obey the governmental authorities. If they're asking us to quarantine and stay at home, uh, then we should do our best efforts to do that. If we do go into work, uh, we need to make sure we're washing our hands. We're practicing, you know, kind of the, the six foot rule, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not suggesting we, we don't um, abide or obey those kind of um, uh, initiatives. Uh, but I do think that this is a fantastic time and an opportunity for us if we can just shift our perspective and not get caught up in the hype and the fear. Now, I, I want to tell a, a, a story. So uh, my wife and I, for two and a half years, went through a challenge with infertility. And I may have talked about this to the team before. I can't remember. Um, but we could not get pregnant. It was a really difficult time for us. You know, we were in our mid twenties, uh, uh, late twenties. We had been air married for you know four or five years. We were trying to start a family. All of our friends were starting a family, and it was just such a challenging time because it just wasn't happening for us. And it led us to a really, really dark place, and and that's part of our testimony and so forth. But we found out kind of after our D-Day, our rock bottom, that we were pregnant with a son. And his name's Matthew. He's going to be 10 this year. But when he was eight months old, my wife and I took a trip to Hawaii, an incentive trip that I won when I was with my sales organization previously. And we came back with luggage. And uh, as I call it, Maui, Wowie, we, had, um, ex we were expecting twins. And, you know, I, I, I remember distinctly the, the moment when we were in the doctor's office and the doctor says, there's the heartbeat. And there's the other one. <laughs> and when he said it, I, I freaked out for a moment and I said, wait, the kid's got two hearts? Like that was my immediate response. Hilarious. I said, my kid's got two hearts? And he said, it's twins. And I literally lost my knees buckled at the moment. And I, and I had to sit down in this chair behind me. And my wife and I were just overwhelmed because this was a completely natural situation uh, we, we, we found out that we actually had identical boys on the way and that season of life was just so, uh, wild because it was unexpected. It was something that was, uh, seemingly very, very challenging ahead. Now, uh, when they were born, when our twins were born, they actually spent, and I wish I had a picture y'all, they were just tiny little nuggets and they spent the first four weeks of their life in the neonative intensive care. And I, I can honestly say it wasn't the hardest time of my life, but it was a very difficult time in my life. They were born with underdeveloped lungs and since then have um, battled with asthma and breathing issues and so forth. And so during this time, of course, when you talk about uh, those with breathing issues or whatever, we're having to be extra cautious because of our twins. But I remember when they were in the intensive care unit and I remember looking at this five pound um, human being with tubes and needles and hoses all in their head and and they were uh, being fed through tubes and it, it was just the most gut-wrenching time because it felt like that there was nothing that I could do and 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 it really 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 came to mind as I was thinking about today because in moments like this it seems like things are really bad and when we don't feel like we have control, we have an opportunity to go one of two ways. We can either focus on um, what we can do in a moment, 
or we focus on what we can not control in a moment and what is essentially happening around us. And so, you know, right now what I'm hearing from the team is that, you know, traffic is a little bit slower. Uh, you know, folks are, are maybe driving through the neighborhood, but not, in, not getting uh, out. And, and, I, and I really feel like this is a, a, a neonative intensive care moment for many of us in our economy right now is we're looking at, you know, our lives and our businesses, and it seems like they're maybe connected to life support. We're wondering, are they going to make it? Or are they not going to make it? And it can be very emotionally draining for us as we begin to attach our heart to what we see. And, and yet this is the moment and opportunity for faith. You know, we are a faith and personal development organization. We talk about faith and, and people kind of say, okay, well, faith is kind of a personal thing to me, or I don't like to talk about faith or maybe somebody in the name of faith has done some stuff in my past that was just whatever the case might be. Now is a time and an opportunity for faith. The only thing that I had to go on when my, my two boys were in intensive care was faith, was the belief and the hope that they were going to come out of this well. The belief and the hope and the focus. And so in these moments, we have distinct opportunities to choose to speak life, to choose to speak encouragement, to choose to pour in hope. And, 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 and yet we also have the opportunity to, to let our minds get off track and we can focus on what is negative. We can focus on what we cannot control and we can let those things into our heart as a way to get us off track. We can focus on uh, death. We can focus on illness. We can focus on uh, poverty. We can focus on um, a lack of things in our life. And so now is such a profound moment that we have an opportunity to literally practice this concept that we call um, getting our hopes up. You know, the world we live in kind of gives us this cliche, ah, well, don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. You know, it's so funny that adults look at children in our culture and go, hey, you can be anything you want to be, right? As kids, we tell our kids this, you can be anything you want to be. Whatever it is that you dream, you can do it. You can be anything you want to be. We encourage our kids with this childlike exuberance and energy. But all of a sudden we get to be adults and go, hey, you know, don't get your hopes up, right? You got to be practical. You got to be realistic. You got to be logical. And, and so we change at some point in time from this childlike nature to this like stuffy grown up uh, person that refuses to give in to hope, refuses to give in to faith, refuses to give in to belief. And so this is a, a moment for us to kind of put the mirror on ourselves and say, am I acting like the grown up stuffy old person who says, don't get your hopes up, you know what I mean? Be realistic, uh, be logical, or do I return back to that childlike place where I'm going, no, 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 no. I'm gonna get my hopes up. I'm gonna believe in the best. I'm gonna focus on the best. And see, one of the reasons that people um, automatically knock this idea is because of past experience. It's because of past, well, it happened back then, it's probably going to happen again. And, and what you're actually doing is you're prophesying, you're speaking that actually out over your life. Because I dare say that there are moments in your life where things have worked out, where things have come through. The challenge is in our limited mindset, we actually hyper-focus on the wrong or negative things instead of actually focusing on the positive things. So what I would say to do is go back at a time in your life when things were maybe difficult. Go back at a time in your life where you have seen breakthrough. Go back in a time in your life where you have seen provision. You know, maybe it was that situation where you had a client walk in, you didn't expect it, and, and you got a sale out of it. Or maybe it was a, a personal situation you were struggling with or a time when you were in need and something worked out and go back and go, no, 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 that happened to my benefit. This is going to happen to my benefit as well. So I think the number one thing is, is we have an opportunity to look at our surroundings, to look at our circumstances. And the number one thing we have to recognize, we have a choice. Our choice is to respond from faith, 
to respond from hope, to respond from positivity, and not just that, but actually use the testimony of our own past in order to speak it into our future, right? You see, there are moments in history where it looked like everything was over. If, if you go back to uh, the, the, the Great Depression, you know, there was moments in history when it's like the, the world is ending, or World War II and Hitler, you know, the world is ending. Or you go back to the Cold War, the nuclear war, you go back to the AIDS crisis, you know, you go back to the, you know, uh, 9 11 and you let the tech bubble crash. You go back to 2008. There's always a moment in time where it looks like things won't work out and yet things continue to move forward. And so we have to shift our focus and get out of this mindset of the hyper sensationalized news media and all that kind of stuff. And it's a battle right now because I promise you, you turn on the news or you talk to a friend and it's fear and it's panic and it's paranoia and it's paralysis. You see, we get to operate from a place of prudency or we operate from a place of paralysis. Prudency or paralysis. Prudency is about being prudent. It's about being mindful. It's about being centered. It's about being hopeful. It's about being faithful and being prudent and persistent. It's not about being paralyzed. So this is a moment for us to step up and step into not living from paralysis, but instead living from a place of prudence. And so go back and mark out some times in your life when this has actually gone in your favor. And I would say, start speaking that, hey, remember that time that this thing worked out for me? It's gonna work out now. Remember that time that I had that sale? Remember that time that you delivered me from that difficult situation? Remember that time that you overcame? Speak that out into the season now. Um, the second thing that I think um, I, I wanna say with this is, know that we are in just a moment. It kind of goes hand in hand with what I was saying about historically. Listen, if we're fighting a virus, all right, a, a flu-like virus, a flu-like virus has a time situation to it. Like I read an article the other day, it said if everything froze in place, this would all be gone in 14 days. Now, of course, we can't freeze everything for 14 days. So we have to be prudent in it. And that's why it might take a little bit longer. But this is not something that's going to last years. And I don't even think it's something that's going to last um, beyond maybe a few months. Because by nature, a, a virus has a beginning and it has an end. And so be mindful that we are just in a season. I, the thing that I relate to the greatest is my own kids, guys. I've got five of them. And, and right now, uh, we have a seven-month-old infant. We have a four-year-old daughter named Sarah James. Uh, we have the identical twins who are now eight. And then we have our older son, Matthew, who's uh, nine. And, and I can promise you, being locked in essentially the house with these kids has been very trying. And you just go, I'm looking forward to bedtime when I can just have some release and whatnot. But, but now during the night, our youngest, Emmy, is fighting uh, her. She's teething and she's got a little cold right now. So she's not sleeping at night. And so last night, I mean, literally my wife and I, we were up like three or four times, broken sleep. And so we're in this cycle where the, the enemy or the opposition of my greatest life is wanting me to get into this mode of like, oh, this is never going to end. Oh, this is so terrible. Instead, I have to fight that battle and I have to go, no, this is a moment in time. It's okay. We just keep moving forward. And I have to remind myself to recenter, to recenter, to recenter. And so my challenge is to focus on what's good about the moment. You know, um, right now, there will be a moment in time when I'll look back and I will cherish and treasure the time that I had with my young children in my home when they're not running all over the place to ball games. You know, we complain about, oh, the kids have been so busy. We've had so many ball games. We're out. And now we're in home locked down and we're going, oh, we're locked down in the house. We have a tendency to hyper-focus on what's wrong with the situation instead of what's right about it. So focus on what's good about the situation and know that we are just in just a moment of time. And so that being said, knowing that we're in a moment of time, knowing that we need to get our hopes up, knowing that we can focus on what's good about the situation, um, the last thing I would kind of uh, share with you guys is this idea is what can you do? You see, the government tells you everything that you can't do or, you know, whatever the case might be. Your circumstances try to dictate to you what you can't do. What can you do? You know, in talking with a few of the different team members right now, you have a great opportunity to catch up. 
You know, the, the market has been so crazy. It's been so busy that there's been a backlog of things that need to be done. Things that don't necessarily maybe require, you know, in-person kind of meetings, things that don't require. And so everybody goes, oh, I'd love to do this, but I can't because I got to work the front desk or I want to do this, but I can't because I got to be available for tours or whatever the case might be. Listen, you have an opportunity in a moment right now to get caught up. You have an opportunity in a moment right now to focus on some of the things that you've always wanted to focus on that you've never had time for. You know, right now is going to be a season where people are either going to be um, full of excuses or full of um, ex acceleration. I, I really, I really believe that we're in a moment where people are going to be full of excuses or people are going to be full of acceleration. Acceleration is, is going to be about doing the things that you haven't been able to do because of time constraints. And now you have the time to do them. Are you going to have the discipline to focus on them now as a way to accelerate you when everything comes uh, back online, which I believe it'll happen. And right now with what you look at, I mean, the government's wanting to pour in uh, stimulus and resources. Um, folks are still going to want to move to, to great areas. Uh, folks are still going to want to be, for most of our folks, getting out of the cold or at least having a vacation home and in, in the cold where they can go skiing and so forth uh, for some of our folks out west. It, listen, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed about the, 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 the marketplace and people's desires and what drives them to this. In fact, if anything, people are like, man, I want to get on with enjoying my life. You know, I've been slaving away at this job and now all of a sudden, you know, here the job is shut down. And so I want to get on and get back to the things that I truly love to do, the things that I truly enjoy. So right now is a great season of preparation. Right now is a great season of opportunity. Right now is a great season of focus and discipline to prepare you for acceleration. It can be a season that's full of excuses. That's going to be like an anchor that you drag around that's going to slow you down or you can hyper focus. Listen, guys, we have a uh, an organization that is built around um, digital technology, uh, digital uh, teaching, education, um, you know, uh, corporate consulting and, and, and group uh, dynamics where we meet in groups and then do speaking and so forth. I've had speaking events canceled. Um, all of our uh, in-person uh, corporate things have, have been suspended for the time being. But right now, we have an incredible opportunity to go out and create some additional digital resources. So my business partner and I are like, you know, chomping at the bit. We're churning like crazy right now, creating new educational resources as a way to speak and step into this. And, and this is the last thing I'll say. Moments of, of uh, here's a challenge. A challenge on the horizon creates an opportunity for innovation. A challenge on the horizon horizon creates, I'm, I'm going to write that down. I'm sorry. Give me a second here because that is um, a challenge is an opportunity for innovation. No innovation happened without an obstacle in the way. No innovation happened without a challenge. There has to be a challenge, a difficulty in order, in order for an innovative innovation to occur. You know, so when you look at the Wright brothers who said, you know, uh, the challenge is that man can't fly. It's a fact that man can't fly. They saw that as an opportunity to be innovative, to create uh, air flight to flight. And, and, and of course, what that has led to now. Uh, you look at Steve Jobs, who had a vision that every human being should be empowered with personal technology. People said, that's stupid. Uh, personal computers would never exist. They're only for businesses. He saw a challenge and, he and it was an opportunity to be innovative and to create such. So we have an opportunity right now in this season and in this environment to be truly innovative. Challenges present the opportunity for innovation. So my encouragement to you guys right now would be to uh, pause, look in the mirror, ask what you can do about the situation, what's good about the situation, know that this is just a moment, don't let the stress and stuff into your to heart to keep you distracted, get your hopes up, start focusing on what you can do, and use it as an opportunity and a moment to be innovative. And, and it will bring acceleration um, down the road. So um, I, I, these ideas might not be new. I'm not trying to say that they are new, but uh, just a great reminder for us in this moment uh, to say now is our time. This is an opportunistic time for us, and we get to step up and step in. And so I hope you guys would be a part of those who do step up and step in and take advantage of this moment, take advantage of this opportunity. So that being said, 
Um, that's really all that I have for uh, the, the, today's call. Uh, I'm always available if anybody wants to chat. My cell is 910-619-4644. Email matt at uprint.life, M-A-T-T at Y-O-U-P-R-I-N-T dot L-I-F-E. Um, I always look forward to catching up with you guys and being available if needed. And I hope this was uh, beneficial and edifying for you today. You guys be well and be safe.